Chapter 12, Extreme Lean. There is nothing casual about a successful lean culture. The commitment needs to be a thousand percent. When this drive for continuous improvement takes an emotional hold of the leadership, I've heard it described as extreme lean. Extreme lean is when the leadership of an organization is consumed with eliminating waste through continuous improvement. As Carl Waddenston said, we are at war with waste. It is an emotional and gut level connection with the desire to see anything and everything with an eye towards simplifying, improving, and eliminating waste. Recently, I visited a facility that had been practicing lean for three years, and the culture felt, well, flat. There was no excitement. I learned that the executives only decided to try lean because their competitors were practicing lean. So these executives tossed the concept to their mid-level managers and said, hey, do this lean thing. They basically washed their hands of any responsibility of how to implement lean principles. They were only committed to lean in regards to how it would support the bottom line. And as a result, they had a flat, uninspiring culture. Sure, they were making improvements and we saw examples of 3Sing, but it was vastly different from the passion I've seen in Japanese companies and a select few in the United States. As a leader, you must be fully engaged with your people in the process. Otherwise, lean will look like the flavor of the month. Just another business tool to be pushed aside when management returns home from the next business conference. Most leaders do lean because they think it will make them more money. Only 2% of lean leaders create dynamic lean cultures based on growing people and not the bottom line. Extreme lean is felt in the heart and the head. A great example of extreme lean is a Japanese company called Molten. As we toured their facility, the president showed us a particular manufacturing cell where they were obsessing over eliminating one-sixth of a second in a one-minute process. I stood there with my jaw open realizing just how sloppy I was in implementing lean. These people chase waste like my dog chases my cat. When I asked the president if he was stressed, he replied, if you are Japanese, you do not know this word. The Chinese are two days away from us by boat and two weeks away from the U.S. If we don't chase waste with this level of passion, we will not have jobs. Where did I get this intensity about becoming lean? It started at the Hawks plant in Japan. When I saw what that company accomplished, against all odds, something in my gut tripped like a wire going live. I immediately knew I wanted this for fast cap. The spirit, the energy of that place inspired me to imagine my company going to levels I never thought possible. Since that experience, my commitment to follow through and helping others to see the power of lean has never wavered, not even once. Remember, the Hawks tour happened after I had languished in lean limbo for about five years and was looking for why I couldn't get lean to take on a life of its own. If you are not passionate about improvement, you need to keep studying, watching, and learning, and trying baby steps until you get your wire tripped. At FastCap, we had one employee who was harder to convert to lean thinking than most. One morning, he was particularly frustrated with all the time we spent on our morning meeting and the improvement walk. Paul, he said to me, we can't afford to spend all this time improving. We have too much work to do and we'll never get it done. I said, we are an extremely successful company. Do you know why? Continuous improvement. Your job is not to produce fast caps, but to improve the process of how we produce fast caps. And your production concerns will take care of themselves. One of my lean teachers had a conversation with a Toyota executive about all the bad press from the lawsuits and the allegations of stuck accelerators and faulty brakes. The executive did not resort to victim language, but simply lamented that some people in Toyota had become complacent with their success. They had lost their passion, their drive. My sensei Brad of the Brad and John fame from chapter two described the effects of a lean culture as analogous to wild Mustangs. I swear his eyes were blazing when he described this wild Mustangs 
free from fear. They drive themselves from an instinctive gut level as though their lives depended on running. The full effect of creativity coming alive in people is as powerful as a herd of wild horses. The trick, of course, is keeping those horses running and free. There is never a time when it is okay to coast. This is extreme lean. Just before the economic crisis hit in full stride in 2008, I began to see troubling signs all around me. I saw companies that have been very successful and responsible in their financial dealings begin to teeter and crumble. As you know, FastCap is heavily dependent on construction and next to real estate and banking, you're hard pressed to find an industry that was harder hit by the recession. At this time, we were doing well. We were in what we call crazy lean mode, meaning we were riding high with company morale, great profits, and international expansion, and a very enthusiastic team of employees. Improvements were happening every day at all levels. Business took a downturn by 25%. Really good people and smart businessmen closed their doors. I decided that it was not the time to coast on our good fortune. If we wanted to escape the perils of the bad economy, we would need to stare it down and dare the recession to touch our shores. It was time to commit to full battle mode. It was time to go extreme lean. This is called operating from position of strength. Why should we wait for bad times to put on our battle dress? I gathered my employees and began to brainstorm with them about our battle plan. We came up with three goals. Goal number one, we will survive. Goal number two, there will be no layoffs and no salary and pay cuts. Goal number three, not only will we survive, but we will prosper through the recession. The first action item was to scrap my dream expansion project. I had set aside $5 million towards building a newer and bigger facility that would be a gleaming icon of our success. It was gut-wrenching to give that up. But we all decided the money needed to stay in our hands as a reserve fund. There were too many landmines in the economy, and any one of them could blow us up. Saving money, not spending it, was the prudent thing to do. My friends and business associates could not believe I would stop this project midstream. The next thing we did was to recognize that even with the 25% decline in business, we should cut our budget another 25%. We made all these cuts without touching salaries, pay, or jobs. We slashed our advertising, marketing budgets in half from $500,000 to $250,000. Most companies do the opposite during bad times because conventional wisdom is that in order to stay afloat, you have to spend a higher percentage of your income on promoting yourself and aggressively wooing customers. We cut spending in absolutely every department by 25%. No department felt picked on or singled out. We all carried the same burden. This is what Extreme Lean looks like. Even though we were already a model lean company, we knew that there was waste everywhere and we were determined to find it. We were committed to carrying out our mission of continuous improvement on fewer resources in order to survive and prosper through the coming storm. Remember, we were already crazy lean. Instead of going in with the spirit of resignation to face the bad economy, we charged forward, determined to improve, to do more with less, wild mustangs of creativity and innovation, just as I have come to expect, our lean determination paid off big. Something miraculous happened. Our business did not fold. It did not even suffer. Every department found creative ways to cut spending while still finding improvements. My marketing and advertising people created better, cheaper, and more effective advertising campaigns. They accomplished more with less money. Imagine that. From this experience came a favorite motto for our company. Money suffocates creativity. When money is no object, we abdicate our most powerful resource, our ideas. It just gets too easy to throw money at problems, and yet we see time and time again that money often creates problems rather than solving them. For example, it used to take us sometimes days to create a single video to post on the internet. We believed we needed to have all the right video equipment and a dedicated video room. 
That was the biggest waste of money this company has ever had. Today, we can consistently produce videos with five separate scenes in under five minutes. This includes shooting the scene, editing and trimming the scene, inserting the scene, applying a music track, adding titles and captions, and starting the upload to YouTube. That is unbelievable. If you want to see it happen, go to Lean Videos and watch How to Make a Lean Video and the review of the best cameras to get the job done. I would normally say it's so easy a child could do it, but kids are great at technology. Instead, I'd say it's so easy a 70-year-old could do it with no technical experience and could learn to do it in under five minutes. Since we think lean, we have removed the barriers that typically hang people up and make the seemingly complex accessible to everyone. The real prize came when we actually met our third goal, to prosper. As a consequence of so many other businesses closing in the construction sector, high-end equipment became available at a much lower price. We were buying up equipment at half the market price and sometimes even less than that, which enabled us to comfortably expand our business. As a result of our expansion, we hired more people and ended 2009 as one of the most successful years in business. During the most difficult economic downturn for our industry, we actually had one of our most profitable years ever with more jobs created, not less, and with excellent wages. That's the rewards of going extreme lean. We will weather anything that comes our way as long as we resist the temptation to become passive in our success. Hello everyone, I'm Jamie Dobbin and I'm Research and Development Manager at Seton Matters and I'm here to give you my one thing on Chapter 12, Extreme Lean. This chapter is so relevant right now. I'm really glad that this video book gave me the opportunity to reread and reinforce the message of this chapter. So the world has experienced a lot of problems right now most notably with the COVID pandemic and more locally here in the UK with Brexit, uh, causing a lot of issues with transportation of goods and materials uh, for the finished chair. This puts a lot of pressure on manufacturing here uh, and also puts a lot of pressure on our culture. It is in these cases where extreme lean is required to survive and not only survive, but thrive as we heard in this chapter. Despite these issues, we didn't let up. We doubled down on improvements. We were improving every single thing every day. We were at war with waste and everyone was actively engaged in trying to seek out that waste and eradicate it from their process. We were improving our product. We were improving our processes every single day. We even maintained our factory tour, using this to keep the rope tight. And we were lucky enough to have our 500th person through the door this year. We invested a huge amount of time on our culture to make sure everyone was aligned with our mission our values and our principles and most importantly we still maintained our morning meeting which is the heartbeat of lean it is our job as lean leaders to never stop we should not use these problems as excuses my one thing from chapter 12 is we must be relentless and persistent in how we practice lean no matter what is thrown at us thank you the one thing we are at war with waste a little anger and passion amongst the soldier towards the enemy won't hurt a thing. Lean videos that I recommend, the best camera.